Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. There's nothing quite like team games to both build and destroy friendships. The fact that everyone wins and loses together means it's not just about playing well yourself, which is important, of course, but also in finding ways to contribute to the team efforts. One way to passively do that is to have a civilization with a strong team bonus. This list will cover the five best of those team bonuses, in my opinion. Now that doesn't mean these are the best team game civilizations overall, but just that their bonuses tend to be near universally helpful regardless of which civilizations your allies choose or which strategies everyone's going for. Let's check it out. Jumping in at number 5 is the Vietnamese. Now here I'm not actually talking about their official team bonus, the Imperial Skirmisher. It's not a bad unit, but what I really mean is their unofficial team bonus, which is that they can see the enemy town center locations from the start of the game. Now technically they're the only ones that can see that, but it's information that can be easily shared with the rest of your allies through flaring and chat. Now I like allies having this bonus for two main reasons. First, it helps your whole team rush a bit more efficiently. Everyone knows exactly where to send their scouts or archers, and won't need to search around the map for a target. I think of that as the more tangible benefit since it increases the efficiency of everyone's scouting. Even more important though, I'd argue, is it means your team will be able to start planning your strategies immediately during all of the Dark Age routines. Knowing 5 minutes earlier where their highest rated player is, or which civilizations each player is matched up against, helps you be a bit more proactive about choosing your opening strategies or predicting what your opponents are going to be doing. While your opponents languish in the dark searching for their sheep, you're already planning what you're going to do as a team. The only catch is the Vietnamese player does need to share that information with the team in a timely fashion. Moving on at number 4 is the Slavs, who let everyone's military buildings provide plus 5 housing. Now this one is obviously nice for the late game when you have a lot of military buildings, all of which save you 25 wood and some construction time, plus a bit of micromanagement. In practice though, I actually like it even more for its convenience in the early game. Let's say your Ethiopians going with double archery ranges or Franks with double stables. Between those two buildings and a barracks, you'll have 15 more population space than usual in early feudal age. That extra room makes you way less likely to get derailed or flustered by hitting your housing cap just as you're trying to get your military out. It feels similar to the last bonus in that there's a small measurable effect, but also an intangible benefit that's hard to quantify, which just makes the game go smoother for your whole team. The next bonus on the list has a very concrete effect though that directly impacts your economy. At number 3 is the Chinese, who give themselves and all of their allies 45 extra food on each farm built. I definitely used to underappreciate this bonus, but you could say extra food for farms has really grown on me. Dark Age farms for example go from yielding 175 food to 220, which maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but it delays having to reseed by over 2 minutes. That's true regardless of other farm upgrades, and remember it applies to every farm on your whole team. Now while it does mean less time is spent rebuilding farms, it won't have a perceptible increase to the farmer's gather rate in practice. Instead, you should think of it as a wood bonus. Over the long run for a game of any given length, the odds are that you'll have built fewer farms over the course of it, diverting those resources to whatever else you like. To take an illustrative example, in an hour of farming with 30 post-imperial Japanese villagers, you will spend about 6900 wood building farms. If, however, you had a Chinese ally, you would have saved over 700 wood. Team bonuses are generally weaker than regular civilization bonuses, so that's actually a decent effect size. Having those longer lasting farms also gives a bit more time to get your farm upgrades early on. With 175 food, it's not always easy to get horse collar before your first round of farms is coming up for reseeding about 9 minutes later. Meaning after those earliest farms expire, the new reseeded ones might also be created with 175 food. On the other hand, a Chinese ally giving an extra 2 minutes on your first round of farms means you're more likely to have done the farming upgrade when they come up for reseeding, giving your second round of farms 295 food. 
To extend it, the next time those farms come up to renew, you're more likely to have heavy plow researched and so on. It's a really positive and efficient cycle to get into and something that happens mostly on its own without you even needing to think about. Next up at number two is the Mongols, who give their team extra line of sight on their scouts. Now I love this bonus and it was almost number one, though it's an easy one for new players to overlook. That's partly because it's so easy to think of it as a military bonus, like the extra line of sight on archers and knights. You might argue scouts in particular already have great line of sight, so what does boosting it two more tiles do? Well, I'd argue it does a lot. To start with, it makes a massive difference to your scouting rate. Generic Dark Age Scout Cavalry can reveal 648 tiles per minute if they don't double back over any area twice. On the other hand, Eagle Scouts can do 858 tiles because of their extra line of sight. In general, of course, that makes them the better Dark Age Scouters. So how do Mongol Allies Scout Cavalry compare? It turns out they can do 936 tiles per minute. That relatively small sounding plus two actually leads to 44% faster scouting for non-American civilizations. A better scout translates to finding starting sheep, boar, and other resources more consistently, scouting your opponent's buildings and units more easily, and finding the relics and extra gold piles on the map. In terms of combat, extra line of sight might not add a lot, but the scout has a unique role that line of sight is critical for and can absolutely impact the game. But with all of that said, there's still one bonus I think is just a bit better. Before that though, let's take a look at a few honorable mentions that didn't make the list. First is the Koreans, who in Age of Kings and Conquerors would have easily been in the top five, with plus one range to mangonels and onagers. One more range in Castle Age is massive against crossbows and other siege, while in the late game it makes onager shots just that much harder to avoid. In the expansions though, it was changed to reduced minimum range, which is a far less useful bonus in my opinion and put them completely out of the running. Another bonus worth mentioning is the Persians plus two attack for knights versus archers. It might sound overly situational, but remember knights are a major feature in nearly every team game. The archers being referenced here also covers a lot more than you might think, and is certainly not just the crossbow line. That list includes any unit even vaguely related to archery, plus a few others that wouldn't immediately come to mind. Considering how often knights are going to encounter any one of those units, and how plus two damage can mean either killing them one hit sooner, or just softening them up for your own team's ranged units, I'd say it's a lot stronger bonus than it might initially appear. Also, following the knight theme, I think the Teuton's conversion resistance is also worth a mention. Because knights have such an easy time avoiding pikemen, monks are frequently used to defend against raiding. The Teutons and their allies resist those conversions for about 50% longer. Elephant civilizations are likewise going to benefit, as that's one of their major weaknesses, and those civilizations are also frequently missing the technology heresy. At the end of the day, I just like the other bonuses on the list a bit better, but I can see an argument for this bonus being top 5. And finally, a shout out to the Huns. There are a handful of civilizations with 20% faster creation time bonuses, which I wouldn't consider top 5, but of that group I'd say the Huns bonus affecting team stables is the most useful. Not only does it help players on the flank get scouts out a bit quicker, but it also helps the pocket players produce knights. For both of those units, any extra bit of time you can save just makes them that much more likely to catch your opponent in a vulnerable position, and help your team jump out to an early lead. Even in the late game, any paladin, elephant, or camel civilization is just going to be that much more potent with their units coming out a bit faster. With all that being said though, the number one team bonus, I think hands down, belongs to the Spanish. They and their allies all get plus 25% gold generated from trade carts and trade cogs. Now team games by nature have a radically different imperial age than one verse ones, simply because you have easy access to infinite gold through trade. This bonus takes that and magnifies it, either by giving you more gold with the same number of trade carts, which can then be converted to whatever resource you need at the market, or you can get the same amount of gold you usually do with 20% fewer trade carts, opening up some population space. Each teammate might approach that balance differently depending on the situation, but the point is every civilization benefits. Now this is of course just a late game bonus, unlike a lot of the others on the list, but once the game reaches the late stages, 25% more gold can quickly become overwhelming and decide the game. 
Even if the Spanish weren't a decent late game civilization, which they already are, I think this bonus alone would make them popular in team games. The fact this is reduced from plus 33% prior to the African Kingdom's release patch and is still number one shows how overpowered I think the bonus used to be. But that's just my personal list of the top five team bonuses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.